E-bike speed limits confuse people because they don't work the way most of us expect speed limits to work. When you hear speed limit, your brain immediately jumps to cars, a hard number, enforced by cameras or police, where crossing that number means you're clearly breaking the law. But e-bikes don't live in that same world. They sit somewhere between bicycles and motor vehicles, and that gray area is exactly where all the confusion starts. Riders see delivery workers flying past at high speeds. Manufacturers advertise impressive top speeds. Cities announce new limits like 15 miles per hour. And suddenly, nobody is sure what's legal, what's enforced, and what's just written on paper. The reality is that e-bike speed limits are not about how fast your bike can physically move. They're about how much help the motor is allowed to give you. And that difference changes everything. What speed limits really mean? One of the most important things to understand is that e-bike speed limits almost always refer to motor-assisted speed, not the total speed of the bike. This comes up again and again in rider discussions and Reddit threads because many people naturally assume that once an e-bike hits its speed limit, it's supposed to physically stop accelerating. But that's not how e-bike laws are written in most places. In reality, the rule usually says that the motor must stop helping after a certain speed is reached. Once that cutoff kicks in, the bike doesn't shut down or slow itself. It simply behaves like a normal bicycle. At that point, everything depends on the rider and the environment. If you pedal harder, ride downhill, catch a tailwind, or already have momentum, the bike can still go faster than the stated limit, just without electric assistance. This is why strong cyclists on regular, non-electric bikes can legally ride faster than many e-bikes in the same lane. Lawmakers don't see this as a contradiction because they're not trying to limit human capability. They are regulating powered assistance, which makes higher speeds easier, more consistent, and accessible to far more people. From a technical perspective, e-bike speed limits are enforced almost entirely through software and motor controllers not physical restrictions. Modern e-bikes constantly read data from wheel sensors, cadence sensors, and motor output. All of this information flows into the controller, which decides how much power the motor should provide at any given moment. When the system detects that the bike is approaching the legal assistance limit, it gradually reduces power until the motor contribution reaches zero. This smooth reduction is why many riders say their e-bike doesn't hit a wall but instead feels like it simply stops helping. In online communities, people often point out that because these limits live inside software, they are technically adjustable. That's true, but this is also where legality comes into play. The moment you change those settings to allow assistance beyond what local laws permit, the bike may no longer legally count as a bicycle, even though nothing about its physical appearance has changed. This is also where e-bike classes quietly shape how speed limits work, even when riders don't realize it. In many regions, e-bikes are grouped into classes specifically based on how fast the motor is allowed to assist. Lower classes typically stop assisting around 20 miles per hour, while higher classes allow assistance up to around 28 miles per hour, often only while pedaling. These classes aren't just labels. They help governments decide where a bike can be ridden, whether it belongs in bike lanes, and how it should be treated alongside regular bicycles. However, when cities introduce blanket speed caps, like a 15 mile per hour limit, those class distinctions start to blur in real world use. A bike that is perfectly legal as a higher speed class at the state level may still be expected to behave like a lower speed bike inside city limits. This mismatch is why riders often feel confused or frustrated. Their bike hasn't changed, but the rules around it have. In practice, e-bike classes set the maximum potential for motor assistance, while local speed limits decide how much of that potential you're actually allowed to use on a given street. Things become more complicated when cities start layering their own speed limits on top of state or national rules. New York City is a clear example. In 2025, the city moved to enforce a 15 mile per hour speed limit for e-bikes and e-scooters, largely due to safety concerns in crowded streets and shared spaces. This rule doesn't care how powerful your bike is or what class it falls into elsewhere. Within city limits, 
The expectation is that electric assistance should not push riders beyond that speed. This is where frustration starts for many riders. Regular cyclists often exceed 15 miles per hour without any motor at all, which makes the rule feel unfair or illogical. But from the city's perspective, the goal isn't to punish speed. It's to reduce predictable, repeatable motor-assisted speed in dense environments where reaction time matters more than outright performance. Enforcing e-bike speed limits in real life is extremely difficult. Unlike cars, e-bikes don't have license plates, registration databases, or speed cameras tracking them. A police officer can't easily tell whether someone riding at 18 miles per hour is being assisted by a motor or just pedaling hard. Because of this, enforcement relies heavily on assumed compliance rather than constant monitoring. In practice, regulators focus more on manufacturers, delivery fleets, and commercial riders than on everyday individuals. It's far easier to ensure bikes are configured correctly at the factory or fleet level than to stop and test riders on the street. This reality shows up often in Reddit discussions, where riders question how frequently speed checks will actually happen and whether the law functions more as a deterrent and awareness tool than as something actively enforced every day. When you step back and look at the whole picture, e-bike speed limits start to make more sense. They are not designed to stop people from going fast, and they are not meant to measure every rider's behavior in real time. Instead, they exist to control how much assistance technology provides in shared public spaces. Motor assistance is predictable, repeatable, and accessible to almost anyone, which is why it gets regulated more strictly than human power. Cities add their own caps to manage local safety concerns, manufacturers enforce limits through software, and riders sit in the middle, trying to balance convenience with compliance. Once you understand that e-bike speed limits are about managing assistance, not motion itself, the system stops feeling random and starts looking like a compromise between technology, safety, and urban reality.